Well, it is a new year, and you know what that means. That means we have another year of anticipated videos to get through. Hello, there, everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here with all of my special guests right here, and welcome to the top five anticipated movies for spring 2024. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> we made it. Right, so yeah, Paul Rudd, get excited because we have uh, a very fun video right here. This is very awesome to do, especially after um, the strike being over from last year. The Thanksgiving video was definitely a lot of fun to do. If y'all haven't got a chance to check out the Thanksgiving video, I highly recommend that. But it does feel good to get back to normal and do these segments now so of course before we continue on with the video i will give everybody their introduction one by one starting off with brian mendoza i thought we we're doing anticipated videos for 2019 oh <laughs> well um, we can't talk about these movies so that's the strike plot twist oh but yeah what's up happy to be here Next one up we got here is the Jackman and Fulcher, Jackson Fulcher. What's up, dude? Um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I can't remember the last time I did an anticipated video on the channel, but um, it's been I think a minute. it might have been 2021. That's, that's what I'm afraid to, <laughs> to, to think of. Yeah, it's been that long. But um, yeah, I'm happy to be doing doing this again. You know, it's it's it should be fun to see what everyone's looking forward to in a year that has um that, that used to have a lot of movies and got a lot of delays i don't know why um it, it, something about <laughs> no more working or unfair wages stuff like that but you know uh, let's let's do it do my bidding <laughs> yeah oh my god next one up we got here is the biggest fan of turkey town henry yui the movies are back again. Hey, God. And yeah, I was excited to be back anticipating stuff. Shout out to the actors and the writers and directors. Next one up we got here is Timothy Shell. I mean, Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got Wonka? Uh, I'd like to think of myself as Paul Atreides, but, you know, sorry. Mm, all uh, ready. So, thank you, Tony, for letting me come back. And may have not, and may have none of Jordan's movies on his list have gotten delayed. Oh, <laughs> I, no. I never let that go. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, I will never let that go. It was um, for Jordan. Uh, good times. Now, next one up we got here is the. Why is he smoking a cigarette? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he had a fucking cigarette in his hand. I was like, damn. Aren't smoking doobies? Tony demonetized. Oh uh, no, it's a mark. I mean, you could sniff it and get high if you want, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, bet. Send it yeah. over. Send me my address. <laughs> yeah um yeah after um half a year of a strike happening and uh i'm happy to partake in this top five list and before i start i want to say that you know has been announced yet but it's most likely going to happen i as an animator artist will stand in solidarity with the animation guild when the animators strike happens sometime this year potentially Woo! and now the final introduction is violet yes ladies last all righty um oh, no. <laughs> this texism is alive and well all righty hello everybody um as i always say thank you for having me on tony i've been joining for most of these i've missed a few every now and then since like Gosh, what is it like 2015 now, Tony? Right now, here we are in 2024. 
and um, yeah, let, let's just let's just Here do it. it. Of course, this is the part where before we get into our list, we talk about our honorable mentions if we have any. So, I got Self Reliance, Orion and the Dark, Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, and just missing my top five is Kung Fu Panda 4. Alrighty, I only got two honorable mentions. I got Challengers. I was excited for this movie, and then they delayed it. I was, like, really upset about that. Looks like an interesting sports movie. I do watch tennis sometimes with my brother, so looking for a good time. And my other honorable mention is Godzilla vs. Kong the New Empire. I didn't get to see the other one in theaters, so hopefully I get to see this in theaters. I haven't seen a Godzilla movie in theater since five years ago. So, yeah, those are my humble mentions. Okay, I have, I have, I have five honorable mentions uh, for this, for this season. Godzilla X-Kong, The New Empire, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. It's, it's two empires in a row. Uh, double the empires right there. Double empires. Uh, <laughs> the Book of Clarence, uh, Drive Away Dolls, and Kung Fu Panda Quattro. All right, I have seven honorable mentions Orion in the Dark, Madam Web. Hopefully, it's a good Sony one, but we'll see. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda 4, The People's Joker, Love Lies Bleeding. The new Radio Silence, Universal Monsters movie, and Challenges. This list was very last minute, so bear with me. So I got Argyle. Um, it would be in my top five if they didn't keep playing the fucking trailer every time I go to the movies. <laughs> uh, mean Girls the Musical, only because in 2004... I saw Mean Girls in theaters, and in 2024, I'm seeing Mean Girls in theaters on a Wednesday, and you can bet your ass I'm wearing pink. Um, the Book of Clarence, Clarence, The Beekeeper, um, and <laughs> Civil War. <laughs> For my honorable mentions, I have Night Swim. Mean Girls, Lisa Frankenstein, Damsel, Roadhouse, Godzilla, X-Con, The New Empire, Orion and the Dark, and Kung Fu Panda 4. Okay, so I have five honorable mentions. Um, so the first one is Art for the King. Um, I will say, uh, this movie looks really inspirational in my opinion. Um, I saw it, this trailer recently, and there was an old guy behind me that went like, every white guy has to have a dog movie. Um, and I have to agree with him. Yeah. Um, then we have the movie Ordinary Angels, which, um, this movie, I don't really know much about it, except that, like, there's, like, a random scene of, like, a stomach ache and then, like, a snowstorm. Um, then we have Madame Web, which, um, mm. you know, looks amazing. Um, then we have Civil War, because I'm definitely, uh, the, the person who wants to see this kind of movie. Um, and then we have Imaginary, which, unironically, I am very excited for. Um, and so that is my top five. Um, and where's then, Mickey's like, mousetrap? Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. Um, in all, in all seriousness, uh, my actual honorable mentions are Comfort Panda 4, just because Comfort Panda, um, and then Challengers because like it looks it looks good, and then the one that I really want to mention is Drive Away Dolls because it looks very gay, uh, so that's cool. Um, and also Ethan Cohen, so that's cool too. So, yeah. All right, everybody. Now that we got our honorable mentions out of the way, now we're going to get into our top five. So let's go ahead and start off with number five. So for my number five, uh, I was kind of doing like a lot of shuffling of which movie to put in the spot. But when I really think about it, um, ever since the, the trailer for this movie dropped, I've been very, very interested. Um, and that's going to be for the new Netflix movie, Damsel, with uh, Millie Bobby Brown. 
it's a fantasy medieval movie about her like being in a cave with this fire breathing dragon and she has to survive her way through this cave but it looks really uh entertaining to me uh you also got nick robinson in here who plays the prince you also got the woman who did the thing angela bassett she's also in here and you have plenty of other talented uh people in this film as well i really thought the marketing has looked very promising for this movie i always like me a really good uh fantasy film and of course it's been cool to see millie bobby brown do these different roles uh apart from stranger things obviously the netflix films with the anola holmes movies has been working out for her well so i look forward to seeing how she'll portray this damsel in a movie literally titled damsel nothing more deeper than that but i am really looking forward to the movie um and i hope it's a really good netflix movie and that is why i decided to pick damsel for my number five damsel sorry robert Pattinson. never saw that movie my number five is final destination seven. Oh wait it's called night of what uh I didn't really expect this to be like a thriller kind of thing. I'm like, wait, this is a Marvel movie? <laughs> it's part of the Spider-Verse showy thing, and I think it looks cool. Looks like some fun, like, action movie from, like, 20 years ago. I get that 2000s vibe from it. I think it's cool that I'm getting, like, a Spider-Verse movie on my birthday month as well. So, yeah. That looks like a good time. That's our number five. My number five, um, it's a new Netflix film. Uh, and I feel like with Netflix, I'm usually like, eh, these days, unless it's like award season. And even then, you never know. Um, but I am actually really excited for Orion and the Dark. Uh, if anything, just because of Charlie Kaufman's involvement in it, uh, one of the main writers on the film. And even when the trailer opens up, <clears throat> the way they have animated the main character with its wide, nervous ass eyes, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is. This is totally a Charlie Kaufman joint. Love this. Um, he's he's one of my favorite artists. So e even if this is like different territory from like what he's been doing kind of lately with the uh, uh, I'm thinking of ending things and anomalies of everything else he's done and his brilliant novel and kind, you know, it's still good to see, you know, him stretch his wings and do something else. Um, and maybe, you know, if this leads to him doing other stuff. Uh, that I love from him, then, you know, why not? And just the movie looks really cute and charming and hopefully very, very funny. And I'm, uh, you know, you know, you know, creative and cool. And maybe there's an emotional core. I don't know. It, it looks pretty cool though. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Number five, baby. All right. My number five is Spaceman. This is a new Netflix movie with, Adam Sandler in a dramatic role, which always good with stuff like Punch Drunk Love and Uncut Gems and even Hustle from a couple years ago. And it's like a sci-fi movie, which is really interesting. And also has Carrie Mulligan and Paul Dano, who are two of my favorite actors working today. So... Very cool. All right, so my number five is a movie that none of us really know jack shit about because nothing's come out about it except for a little tiny teaser trailer. Uh, it's called Mickey 17. Uh, it's the new film from Bong Joon-ho, you know, Academy Award-winning director of Parasite, one of the greatest movies ever made, in my opinion. Absolutely love it. Uh, Robert Pattinson, movie I have been aching to see a trailer for it for about a year now and nothing has come out and this movie comes out in less than three months so genuinely speaking i am very excited for it but at the same time i'm like all right so i'm, I'm making at this point can we get something out of this because i want to see it um I will, either way though whatever it is i'm still going to be there opening night so my number five is mickey 17. For my number five, it's going to be the unusual because, you know, it's not a theatrical release, but it's important to me. And that is uh, Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1. This is the first of a three-part finale to DC's animated movie universe, the Tomorrowverse. Uh, even though it's a pretty, 
pretty rushed that we finally got the Justice League together in this universe, only for this universe to end. But I just want to see how this three-part finale concludes all this, these news versions of the characters. We're looking forward to see what DC Animation does next after this universe ends. I've grown accustomed to this universe, and it's already ending just super fast. So yeah, that's my number five. Alrighty, uh, my number five, um, very unsurprising pick for me is uh, Love Lies Bleeding. Um, you know, you know, obviously the main reason is because this movie looks very gay. Uh, so I'm excited because of that. Uh, but this movie also too, like, you know, with Rose Glass, like, it seems like, you know, like, very like, like taking like traditional sort of like genres and then like really like pushing them to like their limits. And this one like really looks like that. Um, and like, I don't know, it just like, I think looks really, really good. And I like the, the aesthetics of it. And of course, like the film very clearly um, is trying to be more like a, like a modern day sort of take on like Bound or like that kind of like, you know, further type, uh, you know, like safer kind of film. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I'm just looking forward to it. And it has an amazing cast and uh, I hope it is good. So that's why it's my number five. All right, everybody. Now let's go ahead and get into our number four. For my number four, uh, I actually just saw the trailer for this not too long ago, actually. The movie I've heard of, but when I was looking at Movie Insider, when I was putting this list together, um, I was like, you know what? I never saw a trailer for this movie, um, and I'm glad I did, because I think it looks like a genuinely fun time, and that is Lisa Frankenstein. This one looks definitely different because it's about a teenager who literally has a crush on a corpse. But yeah, it looks very uh, interesting, though. Something looks that looks very fun, kind of gives the 80s vibe, but more for like the modern audiences, of course. Um, and Catherine Newton obviously looks like she's going to be a lot of fun in the role. Um, and I like the overall style and look of it. The cinematography in it uh, looks really nice, too. I just thought uh, the trailer looked like a lot of fun. It's coming out on Valentine's Day weekend as well, which I think looks perfect for a movie like this. So I hope it's a fun time at the movies, and that's why Lisa Frankenstein is my number four. Can't wait for it. My number four is Kung Fu Panda 4. Uh, I enjoy these movies. Uh, they have like some of my favorite action sequences ever put to animation. Uh, I remember seeing the third one, like when it was out at the time, I was like, whoa, this is so cool to see. And I never saw the first two in theater. So, yeah, it, it looks like, it looks fantastic. I love the premise of like Poe being a mentor. It's really interesting to see. Um, I've, I've heard there's more that we don't know that they're teasing. So, yeah, that, that looks exciting. Skadoosh! All right, my number four um, is Challengers. It was supposed to come out last year, but then it got uh, delayed. I don't know why it got delayed. Some, you know, it was something about unfair wages or something like that. I don't know. But um, <laughs> it's the new film from Luca Guadagnino, and uh, I've, I've enjoyed several of his films, uh, Call Me By Your Name, but also his Suspiria remake I love, and then Bones and All, you know, he, he's a really talented filmmaker, and I love the fact that um, we get to see more Mike Feist. He's one of the main players in this, and I absolutely loved him in the West Side Story Spielberg movie. Uh, I know he's had a long, <clears throat> longer career uh, before that, mostly like on Broadway doing theater stuff. So to see him do another film, especially one that's a little different from just a, a musical adaptation, that's exciting. And of course, Zendaya, one of our finest talents working today and, and Josh O'Connor who I've liked in uh, uh, the Anya Taylor-Joy Emma adaptation um, and I'm also excited just to see like um, Luca Guadagnino's next movie Queer uh, with Daniel Craig and Jason Schwartzman is written by the same guy who has written this um, so I'm interested to see like if Luca being the artist that I admire wants to re-team with this this writer you know that has me excited to see you know <laughs> what's what what this movie has in store and you know I'm just, I'm just looking for a really really great time with this and i think luke is gonna deliver baby my number four is mickey 17. like timothy was saying like we did get that teaser 
couple years back, but we haven't got much since then, unfortunately. But this sounds like an interesting movie. We got Robert Pattinson and Bong Joon-ho, whose last movie was Parasite, which, of course, won Best Picture and was the highest rated movie on Letterboxd for a while. But, yeah, and it also stars... Steven Yeun, Tony Collette, and Mark Ruffalo as well. So seems like it's going to be an interesting time. So my number four is going to be Lisa Frankenstein. Uh, pretty much I agree with everything Tony said, but I also I think, unfortunately, like, so this is the directorial debut of Zelda Williams, Robin Williams' daughter, mm-hmm. son. Daughter, yeah, daughter. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did read about that. Thank you for bringing that up. Basically, everything that Tony said, I absolutely agree with. Catherine Newton is one of my favorite actresses working today. I absolutely loved Freaky. And I'm excited to see her venture out into a new role like this. Yeah, no, I'm excited for Lisa Frankenstein, so that's my number four. Oh, Diablo and Cody wrote it, too. <laughs> My number four is the uh, Warner Brothers uh, Golden Nugget that should hopefully become a Golden Nugget at the box office. Uh, Dune Part Two. Delayed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it did get delayed. Yeah, previously. <laughs> Twice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, Dune Part Two. Um, I was surprisingly. I was surprised by the first Dune movie because, you know, uh, my first exposure to Dune was the David Lynch version. uh, And my mom also wasn't a fan of that version. So we both decided to check out the first Dune. We're like, holy shit, this is awesome. And we've been hyped for Dune Part 2 ever since. I love Denise Villeneuve as a filmmaker. Every film that I've seen from him when it's like Prisoner... Arrival, Blade Runner 24, and I'm always like coming out thinking uh, philosophically and emotionally. And hopefully, this is a, a dope ass finale to this two part saga. Okay, my number four is also Dune Part Two. Obviously, like with like, the, you know, like the theatrical aspects and the aesthetics of Dune. Obviously, I don't think I need to get into that or elaborate much on it. I'm a big fan of Denis Villeneuve and like like Prisoners and my favorite films are 2049. I think this is an amazing film also. And Arrival like is is like one of my top 15 favorite movies like ever. So obviously just because of that, I'm excited. Like the main reason I'm really looking forward to this though is um, when the first Dune came out in October 2021, like the week before I basically really began like my transition. And um, that I remember like right around that time, I was really, really like struggling. And I went to go see that uh, film in IMAX. That was like a really like important like cinematic and just like artistic moment experience for me. Um, just because, like, I was in such, like, a deep state of, like, change and, like, I wasn't sure what was going to happen and, like, I immersed myself in this, like, massive world with, like, so many, like, different, like, emotions and stuff like that. And so, like, it really, like, impacted me and, like, um, I saw it again, like, a month or so after that and, like, in a much better, like, mind state and, like, um, and just, I don't know, it just, like, when I think back to that film, like, I just think back to, like, a lot, you know, like, who, like, just, like, how far I've come, and so, like, just seeing this movie come out now, like, in March this year is, like, gonna be kind of, like, a cool, just sort of, like, moment for me of, like, you know, just reflecting on everything, and so, so that's back to number four, so, yeah. <clears throat> All right, everybody, now we're gonna go ahead and get into I'm our sorry. number three. So, my number three, my number three, she, it's kind of hard to tell what my number three is. Oh, (laughs) it's Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yeah, baby. Let's bring in Paul Rudd one more time. (laughs) 
<laughs> I never get tired of that. I never. Get I want Paul Rudd to play Santa Claus now. Honestly, yes. I am really, really looking forward to Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire, a movie I actually never imagined we were going to get because I always saw Ghostbusters Afterlife as the nice closing chapter to the Ghostbusters trilogy. But, you know, it's Hollywood. When your movie is successful, you're guaranteed to get a sequel. That's just how it is. But you know what? I won't complain as long as they got something good here. That's all that matters. And I do think the idea of literally the town being like frozen ice... Uh, is a really neat idea and something we haven't quite seen in Ghostbusters before, so I'm up for that idea. And of course, this one's going to be more of a combination of the old and the new uh, coming together, whereas the old only had a little cameo in uh, the previous one, Afterlife. It looks like they actually will be more involved here, and then you have newcomers like Kumail Nanjiani and Patton Oswalt. I love both of those guys, so I'm excited to see them in this. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to seeing the returning cast of, of course, like you saw, Paul Rudd, uh, McKenna Grace, uh, Finn Wolfhard. Um, everybody is back here, and I just can't wait to see how this one will be executed. Um, not much more to really say because we've only gotten a teaser um, as we're recording this, but the teaser alone has gotten me really excited for it. So that's why Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is my number three. But where's Melissa McCarthy? Oh, my yeah, number... you're right. You're right, we're missing her. My number three is also Ghostbusters 2016. Oh, wait. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy that one, though. Uh, Frozen Empire. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're coming here. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> coming to you with another video. <laughs> Last shot I was rated. <laughs> Bow down. <up. laughs> oh, no. It's also <laughs> Frozen Empire. Uh, <laughs> <Let it go. laughs> okay, okay, I need to calm down. Um, I enjoyed Afterlife. I didn't get to see it in theaters, unfortunately. I don't think I've ever seen a Ghostbusters movie in theaters thinking about it. So um, I think this will be my first one in theaters finally. Because I've seen like the other ones at home pretty much like almost my whole life, including the first two. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see this like frozen New York. I hope there's a crossover scene where they get Olaf to fight Elsa. Because Elsa is definitely the villain of this movie. Definitely. Um it's cool to see Paul Rudd in the with the squad now. So um, I have no idea how this movie's gonna end, but I imagine the climax with this frozen ice location is gonna be pretty crazy. So it's gonna be uh, one cold climax. I just oh, know God. for sure, Brian. It's gonna give us the chills. Oh yeah! It's all, <laughs> um, all the theaters will be. It's gonna be a frozen empire. All the all the theaters are going to be offering uh, ice cream, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm excited for this movie. That's my number three. My number three is Mickey 17. Sure hope it doesn't get delayed after I've put it on this list. Um, yeah, good. even though we've only gotten that short short little teaser. I mean, the fact that it is Bong Joon Ho, uh, it's his newest film after Parasite. It's like, yeah, like of of course that's going to be near the top and then you throw in the fact it's not just Robert Pattinson it's Naomi Aki it's Stephen Yun it's Mark Ruffalo and Tony Collette the the hereditary queen if you will so and I, I know I know nothing about it other than it's sci-fi dealing with some kind of cloning plot and it's based on a, on a novel um but you know if if it's something that Bong Joon-ho wanted to adapt if this is the story he wants to tell I can't wait to fucking see it baby better than better than a fucking uh, American remake of Parasite. Oh, I guess they're still trying to do that, though. Oh. oh. My number three is Drive Away Dolls, which was supposed to come out in September, but got delayed because of you-know-what. What? What was it? Chicken butt. Say it, goddammit. <laughs> it was the fucking money! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, 
Yeah, like I saw this trailer in front of Asteroid City, and it looks really funny. Like, obviously, I'm a Coen Brothers fan, and Ethan is doing this with his wife, Trisha Cook, and you got the leads are Margaret Qualley and Geraldine Vishwanathan, I think that's how you say it. I probably didn't say it right. I apologize, but yeah, it also has Beanie Feldstein, Coleman Domingo, Pedro Pascal, and Matt Damon. So I think it should be a pretty fun time. So, Tony, like you, I agree. I cannot figure out what my number three is either. Holy shit, it's the same one. He stole the Blu-ray. It's a three. Yeah, how the hell did you do that? Um, it's like I can't put it on the like. I don't know. Okay, so yeah. go Tony. Uh, number three is Ghostbusters Afterlife. I legitimately cannot wait to see this movie. Um, I, I, I really liked um, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, not Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, we're going way back here. So, way back. I legitimately loved um, Afterlife. I thought it was one of my. I thought it was not only a great movie to cap off the first two Ghostbusters films. It was also a great ending for Harold Ramis's character. Yeah, Harold Ramis's character, and also a pretty decent apology for whatever 2016 was. Um, I absolutely love this movie, um, so I'm excited to see this new one. Like Tony said, and like whoever else said it before, I think it was Brian, uh, the idea of having a literal frozen empire like New York just completely be froze over is absolutely insane, and I absolutely cannot wait to see it um, come to flourishing, and I hope that they stick to it. I am worried about the change of directors, though, because the director of this movie did the Poltergeist remake. Take that as he will. Uh, so I am genuinely excited for this movie, but yeah, number three, Ghostbusters. You know, it's weird. You know, it's weird. Uh, I hate to break this three-way, but I'm going to turn this into a four-way because my number three is also Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I was, I've been a fan of Ghostbusters ever since I was a kid. You know, I, I, I like the first movies. Yes, I even like Ghostbusters 2. And I know most people don't like Ghostbusters 2. I like, I like Yeah, thank you. I like <laughs> the real Ghostbusters. A lot of people forget that the real Ghostbusters is actually a well-written cartoon for its time. Um, not people, not a people uh, know about this, but most people slept on Extreme Ghostbusters. That was my shit. It was like some '90s grunge edge, you know. And I'm not saying that because a goth girl was in that show, but um, that was like the most time we spent with Egon too. Um, and then we, for the longest time, had to wait for Ghostbusters three. And then uh, I think a movie in 2016 came out. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Uh, all I know is that I really like Ghostbusters Afterlife, and uh, I really liked how it ended that storyline of the first two movies. And I'm really liking the bigger scope Frozen Empire is going for, the melding of both worlds, the old generation, new generation meeting together. Uh, I hope this new director knocks it out of the park. You know, fun fact there's a Freddy vs. Ghostbusters fan film. I'd go, I'd watch it. My number three is Mickey Seven Chan. Um, there's not a lot to say about this because we don't really know a lot about this film. Um, I honestly think there's probably a good chance this is getting delayed because we literally know nothing about this still and it comes out in like two months. But yeah. I'm, 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 I'm still going to include it just because it's Bong Jun Ho. The cast is incredible. Um, I hope it comes out, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so, yeah, that's my number three. Tony, you're muted! Start again! Start again! <laughs> now we gotta start over from the beginning. Alright. My number six, 
I do. Oh, you're so muted. Sir, you are muted. I don't It's better to stay in the video. There you go. Woo! There you At go. least put that in. Yeah, I was like, what my mic? Okay. Why is that verse 16? Yes, number 16. All right, everybody. Now we're going to get into our number two. Two. Okay, so for my number two, this is a movie I've been very interested in um, since it was actually first announced, uh, and then the trailer for it dropped, and I got more excited for the movie, and that's going to be for Matthew Vaughn's Argyle. I am really so stoked for this movie. I am really a big fan of Matthew Vaughn's work. Um, the only work of his that did underwhelm me immediately was The King's Man. Um, that one I didn't care so much for, but everything else's filmography I have like really liked a lot. I've enjoyed a lot. I find a lot of entertainment value in his movies. I think he's a really good director. I love his style uh, directing, the way he approaches it. Um, I like how balls to the wall he gets, where it's uh, something like Kick-Ass, and of course the previous two Kingsman movies in the original timeline. Um, and Argyle definitely looks like it's going to be another one of those like balls to the wall, silly kind of movies. Um, it definitely looks like my kind of jam, and wow, the cast in this. So stacked, I wouldn't be able to name everyone, but of course, just to name some. We have Henry Cavill, we have Bryce Dallas Howard, we have Sam Rockwell, uh, Catherine O'Hara. Love the cinematography, and as expected from Matthew Vaughn, the action sequences look super, super exciting. Um, can't wait for how the action sequences are going to go in Argyle. Even though, yes, uh, admittedly, I have gotten this trailer a little too much in theaters. Um, it's not going to stop my excitement for this movie, though. Just like I said, I like Matthew Vaughn a lot. I think he's a really talented guy. This movie definitely looks like it's just made for me to just have a grand old time at the theater. Just pure escapism. And that's why Argyle is my number two on this list. I hope they play this trailer a million more times, but after the movie's out. Anyways, my yeah. number two is Argyle. Um, I watched this trailer a lot. I think the editing is really cool. And I can't wait to see Henry Cavill as a secret agent again. Like... I think it'd be cool if he does like a James Bond movie. I don't know if it's ever gonna happen, but I guess you could say it's like a James Bond movie. Uh, you also got um, Bryce Dallas Howard in here. Uh, Jessica Chastain is not in this movie, unfortunately, but maybe if they do a sequel, that'd be funny. Um, yeah, that, it looks like a fun time. I get a lot of Kingsman vibes with the action already, and it looks really colorful. I. I've heard this trailer has been played a lot in theaters at this point. <laughs> so, yeah. Argo. Looking like a fun time. My number two. My number two is Love Lies Bleeding. Uh, obviously, they just released uh, well, like a month ago or a couple weeks now. They released a pretty, pretty killer trailer for it. Got me hyped already. And then for some reason, I have completely blanked on like, you know, what, what movie is this? And then I look it up. It's like, oh, it's Rose Glass's next film. Uh, the first of hers being uh, St. Maud, which came out 2021 now uh, around that time, uh, which so. is a movie I, I loved so very much. Uh, I think she's a great force behind the camera, but also with her, her screenwriting. So getting another film and also having a little bit more of like a larger cat and, you know, you have. Ed Harris, Dave Franco, and then Kristen Stewart, Jenna Malone, Anna Brishnikov, uh, Katie M. O'Brien, you know, wonderful people filling out the, the rest of this cast. I'm just really excited to see what kind of, you know, twisted CD web she has she has woven here because it it looks pretty, pretty goddamn cool from the from the marketing already. And yeah, it looks right up my alley. Very excited. All right. From the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn. You son of a bitch. It was also on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's like, dance. Yeah, um, yeah, this 
of course, like, the trailer has been a bit overplayed. Like, I've seen the trailer in front of, like, every movie I've seen, <laughs> except for, like, one since October. But it does look really funny. I laugh a lot whenever it comes on. And it's... The cast is incredible. We have... Henry Cavill and Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Sam Rockwell and Samuel L. Jackson and Catherine O'Hara and also Dua Lipa and John Cena going from Barbie to this just <laughs> top tier duo and yeah of course Kick Ass and the first Kingsman in my opinion Kick Ass and. Yeah, of course, we know who the real star of the movie is going to be, and it's the cat. Oh, Very true. Yeah. So number two, I, I have no words for it, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and let the 4Ks talk. And most importantly... Wow, I, lo I love your collection for the MCU. <laughs> it's Reptar from Rugrats. It's Godzilla, by Kong, uh, a new empire. I, I legitimately, oh my god, the hype I have for this movie is unreal, and it would be number one if it wasn't for another movie. But I like, I remember going in so excited for Godzilla versus Kong, and I loved it. And I saw, I saw it twice in IMAX, and I never do that, so I really really do cannot wait to see this movie uh it comes out two weeks before my birthday so that's going to be an insane birthday present uh so thank you warner brothers for the delay there to that particular date the trailer was unbelievably really cool to me uh yeah i had some moments in it that i thought were genuinely like i mean i'll be honest here even for godzilla standards is a little corny like Godzilla running that way was a little weird to me at first, but kind of got used to it. Um, the rumored villain for the movie is, I'm not going to say who it is, but it's going to be great. Yeah, I just can't wait to see these two like actually fight together as well. That's going to be cool. A little other Godzilla movie that came out last November kind of set the bar a little high for Godzilla movies after, so I doubt it'll hit that bar at, at all. But I'm still, you know, excited. I don't know if you guys saw it or not. Did you guys see minus one? Yeah. I Great. Still haven't seen it. I still haven't seen it yet, but I want to try to see it. I didn't it's it. so fucking good. But um, yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited for um, uh, Godzilla X Kong or by Kong or Times Kong or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be called. Uh, Equals X C uh, Godzilla. Yeah, there you go. Godzilla. Godzilla, the definition of pie by Kong. Huh? My number two is Mickey 17. Um, you got Bung Joon Ho, and I like Bung Joon Ho. I like Parasite. I love me some Robert Patterson. Put the two together, uh, you get me more hyped up, and it looks like some authentic science fiction. So that's my number two. Okay, my number two. Someone please help me. What's it? Orion in the dark. How do you pronounce it? Orion in the dark. Orion. Orion okay, thank dark. you so Orion much. I dark. literally, I literally cannot say words. But yeah, that's my number two. Um, I'm very excited for this. Um, the plot for it sounds very up my alley. The creative team behind it is really exciting. Like everyone's gonna focus on the writing. But can we talk about the director? Um, uh, let's see, Sean uh, Carmatz, um, the only two other works are Trolls, um, stuff, so, like, obviously, like, incredible, um, and so now we have this film, um, and I'm really excited to see it, and, uh, I hope, uh, it probably won't, but hopefully it's released in some theaters, um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see, because Netflix with theatrical stuff is every now and then it seems but hopefully um if not then i'll be watching at the comfort of my home i wish it was in theaters but yeah so that's my number two well we are already at the ending point of this let's go let's get it we are now at our number one most anticipated movie for spring 2024 <laughs>
my number one movie of spring 2024 actually would have been my number one for the fall winter of 2023 had it not gone delayed and that is dune part two this movie i'm really really looking forward to i'm a really big fan of most of uh, denny's work i really liked uh dune a lot i like that one and then arrival and blair of 24 and 9 love those movies a lot and prisoners as well and this one obviously looks like it's gonna continue the epic scale that the first one delivered um the cinematography on display mm -hmm. looks incredible mm -hmm. that's expected obviously for denis but yeah cinematography looks incredible um the scope of it uh it looks bigger than even does than the previous entry and uh everyone obviously they look really good from T timothy chalamet to zendaya well, to John oh. wait what what <laughs> what god damn it what Nothing, happened? Tony. I thought you were calling my name. I heard Timothy in the. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everyone. Actually, you know what? Just to play real quick. Yeah, here, the star of Dude Part 2. Uh, he looks like he's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, we're definitely going to support you day one, my friend. Thank you. I thought so. I have it. But yeah, we got Timothy, who is in this room with us, Zendaya, Josh Brolin, Rebecca Ferguson, and then you got newcomers like Florence Pugh, you got Austin Butler, and you even got Christopher Walken in this, which uh, it's nice because I feel like lately Christopher Walken has mostly done like, um, like sillier, like maybe like a kid movie, like The War with Grandpa, or... Uh, some other stuff, but yeah, he's doing an epic like Dune Part 2, which is cool to see. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see where uh, Denis is gonna a end off the story technically. I know there's Dune Messiah that he's gonna do, but that serves as more as like a prequel. Um, so Part 2 is technically like the end for this saga, but I definitely can't wait to see how he'll end it as far as like this timeline goes. And yeah, it's a movie that I have been waiting anxiously for. It's finally here, and I'm obviously glad the strike is over so all these movies could come out. I hope it doesn't disappoint, um, and yeah, I just hope that it's a really good movie at least, and that's why it's my number one most anticipated. My number one is also Dude Part 2, and I unfortunately didn't get to see the first one in theaters. I watched at home on my computer. So this will make it up for it. I've been waiting for this movie since that first part. And I was really devastated when this got pushed because of the strike. And my backup movie was The Creator, also a Hunt Server movie. I'm like, yeah, this movie's gonna be insane. Like the scope of it. It's it screams the big screen, like, oh my goodness, this is like sci-fi. And it's must see theater experience, you know. It's like can't wait to see the finale of the story play out in this version. Like, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. So yeah, that's my number one. Yep, hate to be a broken record, but my number one most anticipated is also Dune Part Do. Um, it's, it, look, the, the first movie's incredible. Uh, Denis Villeneuve, who's always been a fantastic filmmaker, you know, honed in all of his best sensibilities and instincts into part one and part two already just from the marketing already looks even better in some ways. So, and just from some of the ways people have been describing it as well, it's like, yeah, I, I'm jonesing to see this one. Um, it's, it's, you know, great to see the returning cast all back and it seems like they haven't missed a beat it'd be great to see more of uh, batista and, and and brolin and you know of course uh, more of the zendaya and uh chalamet plot line and then of course the the newcomers like florence Pugh, you know one of the best right now uh to ever do it she's amazing and austin butler doing something completely different from what he did with elvis just playing a weird freak <laughs> so it's like yeah i love that and then christopher walken who like like tony was saying it hasn't really had a chance to really, you know, try to prove himself, you know, for the longest time. He's just, he's just coasting on, on that way he talks and just that it's him. So with this, it's like, Oh hell yeah. You know, 
give him some great material and let's see what he can do. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited for this, especially since we are in a time where it feels like almost like the <clears throat> the audience expectations are changing as far as like what these blockbusters that they pay to see should be. I think, you know, biggest evidence, evidence of that is probably how a lot of the like, you know, big comic book movies have been turning out lately, you know, not to be like, ooh, anti-comic book, I'm not, but it's just like, I think a lot of the like factory mode that those <laughs> movies are kind of made on is like jaded a lot of people. And then you get every once in a while, like director focus or like vision driven uh, blockbuster filmmaking, like you're the Batmans or Guardians 3 or Dune when that first came out. And because HBO Max same day uh, premiere, but even then, it, it still did really big, and people are really anticipating this, and it, I, I, it's just going to be really exciting to uh, just see the people's response to it. I think it's going to be really great, and I, I hope I, I hope it does well because it could, you know, it could save the industry. <laughs> Boom! Who the fuck? <laughs> it's yeah. Aquaman. Yeah, it's punk. <laughs> Aloha, everyone. What? <laughs> My number one is also, of course, Dunk Part 2. I mean, Doom Part 2. <laughs> yes. Obviously. Yeah, this would have been my most anticipated movie of last year, but it got delayed again because of striking. And... Now it's my most anticipated movie of this year. The first movie was great. I saw it in IMAX, and it's a great-looking movie, of course, and great-sounding movie. This new one, which is a continuation from where the first movie left off, we got Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Hi. Rebecca Ferguson... <laughs> Coming back alongside Leia Sedu, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh, and Christopher Walken. Just, it's gonna be a good time, and I'm gonna see this one in IMAX as well. So, my number one is also Dune Part 2. That is so fat. Not only is this my most anticipated film of like this season, but it's also my most anticipated film of the year because I have been waiting over two years for this movie to come out. I was super depressed about it getting delayed because of the strikes. I am seeing this movie if we get it in IMAX 70 millimeter because that was the best way I've ever seen a movie in my entire life. The beautiful cinematography that Dune adds with the beautiful look of IMAX 70 millimeter. It's a dream made in heaven, mixed set with the incredible audio that IMAX provides and Hans Zimmer's amazing score for the first film, that he won his second, somehow his only second Oscar for that movie. Like, it's amazing how this guy has composed some of the most iconic scores of all time, and he only has two score Oscars. Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, Christopher Walken... Stelian Skarsgård. The cast here is fan fucking tastic, and I just I cannot wait to see this movie. Um, so yeah, number one, Dune Part Two, or Dunk Part Two. <laughs> for my number one is a movie I've been following for a couple of years, and that is Spaceman, uh, starring Adam Sandler. And that the reason why it's. Um, because uh, I actually got to read the book that the movie's going to be based on. And set from what I read in the book, or I read the whole thing, but it's definitely the mo it's going to be Adam Smith's most philosophical, most abstract, very fucking weird. It's going to be very fucking weird, just to let you know. Um movie out there and i can't wait for pe average people to watch spaceman on netflix and come out going what the fuck did i just watch <laughs> i can't wait for them to watch paul dano play a giant hairy spider with human li human red lips the fuck 
Yeah, it's in yeah, in fact, yeah, there's his character. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's his character. In the book. See, see, this is why you do homework. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie ends in a way that can either make people go, oh, wow, you know, that's pretty deep, or go, fuck you. <laughs> um, but no, I'm looking forward to him. Um, I'm definitely going to look forward to see how Adam Sandler performs this character. Like, it's more than just a sci fi story about a guy going to space, talking to a space alien. It's really just about this broken man who had a fucked up childhood and has a broken marriage at the same time and that's my number one i'm convinced <laughs> okay 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 so my number one okay so i was so people might know what this is gonna be i was just considering making this an honorable mention because we don't know like when this is really coming out but fuck it like if this comes out this is easily my most anticipated movie ever so i'm just gonna say it this weekend Trey Edward Schultz movie. I don't know when this is coming out. It might be sometime this year. Rumor is like March or February. I have no fucking idea. All I know is whenever it comes out, it's like going to be the most anticipated thing ever. Um, I know things about this movie that I'm not going to say. Um, the only thing that has publicly been said is that it's a companion piece to April's final album is The Weeknd. Um, and so I'm just going to leave it at that. So that's my number one. There's something else to say. Um, if, this, if this doesn't come out, then so fucking be it. So yeah. Literally. Uh, all righty. Holy fuck. <laughs> wow. All righty, everybody. That is our top five most anticipated movies for spring of 2024. This has been so much fun. Of course, thank you to my guests for being here. It's always a lot of fun having everyone here, seeing what everyone's uh, top five lists are. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. Uh, be sure to comment below what are your top five anticipated movies for spring of 2024. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to get notified about these anticipated videos or any other stuff that I do for my channel. And then, of course, if you want to follow me, I got Letterbox for my movie activity. I got Serialized for my TV activity and of course there is my Instagram um, which is the link right here on the headline actually um, and then Twitter not X Twitter um, <laughs> and and, and uh, TikTok even though I don't post there a lot but go crazy for my TikTok if you want to and uh, yeah that is that and I will give everyone their conclusions starting off with Brian Mendoza you can find me on all those uh, social media. Even OnlyFans? No! No! Uh -uh. Damn it! No! Uh-uh. Don't forget to send me those feet pics, Brian. Oh, God. Come on, man. I paid good money for those. <laughs> Five hundred dollars for feet? <laughs> yeah, more like seven hundred and fifty. Oh, I could go <laughs> off a of phone right now and send it to you. Uh, uh, so yeah, follow Brian Mendoza. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, uh, oh, on that note, Jackson, thank you. Mm. And where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on my own YouTube channel where uh, once in a blue moon I'll do a review. I mostly do box office talk now. Um, but you can also see my my uh, regular shit posts on my Letterboxd account if you want to see those. Um, it's just my name, Jackson Fulcher. So you can find me there. Thank you very much, Henry. Where can we find you? Thank you. You can find me in a dark alley at night. Oh, wait. No. What? Don't do that. No, I am... Wee, wee. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I am on YouTube and Letterboxd and Serialized and Twitter and Instagram and pretty much all over the internet. I'm there and... Yeah, go see all three hours of Civil War and IMAX. All right. Thank you, Timothy uh, Chalamet. Uh, we're looking for the Dune Part 2. Uh, congratulations. Where can we find you? Congrats you on your Follow course. me on Letterboxd. I promise you it's not the actual Timothy Chalamet. Uh, that's really all that I post on, other than my Twitter. Not, like Tony said, not X. 
God damn it. What about uh, so my letterbox is at T Anderson, capital T, capital A, 024. Uh, you can follow me on there. That's mostly where I post my movie reviews. I don't really review movies. I just go, all right, one star. This movie sucked. Yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for having me again. My name is Timothy Chalamet, Academy Award-nominated actor. Should have won. And I will see you guys soon. Beautiful. Thank you, Jordan. Where can the people find you? Hopefully not getting his next movie delayed. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Wheel of Fortune sound effect. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can follow me on Facebook through not just my profile, but you can follow the Punish Rod TV animation Facebook page, the Scooby Doo Meddling Saga fan page. We know that thing's that that shit has been active for a while, but it's got 2K followers for some fucking reason. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at James Bro, not X. Fuck you, Elon Musk. You can eat my ass. Uh, Do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess you can follow me on Instagram because I do a lot. I post a lot of my physical media collect, collecting here and there. And you can follow me at YouTube at, oh yeah, Jordan Farrell FTV Animation, where I've been posting some shorts such as recently Legend of the Sinbad, Worry. And I've also released a black and white cut of the 2022 film I made, Muscleman's Christmas Stripe, a black and white cut, which by the way, you can also watch Muscle Man's Christmas Drive on Tony's Tiger Paws Entertainment channel and also watch Worry and Legend of the Sinbad on that channel as well. And stay tuned in the future. I worked on a short film with a studio called Exceptional Minds for Secret of the Hunter. I'm like an animator on that and like I designed the logo and stuff. And also sometime in the future, in the far future, I got Scooby-Doo Waters of Atlantis coming soon. And I also got a super special short. <laughs> <laughs> I also got a special short Superman fan film called "You're Not Alone," starring the person right after me, Violet herself. Wow! And thank you very much, Violet. Yes, Superman Ross. Um, thank you as always, Tony. These are definitely these are generally one of the highlights of my years. My year, my year, what am I saying? Um, when we do these. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, no. Um, uh, so actually, I have some stuff to plug this time, finally. Uh, so YouTube is back. Um, finally. Um, yeah. Uh, but I have a new album coming out in, uh, on this, on January 26th. Um, and in, yeah, so that that's exciting. Um, so shout out to that. So I want to plug that. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so that's that. Uh, thank you again. And uh, yeah, bye. All righty. Thank you very much, everyone. This is 22 Tiger Dude here with Brian, Jackson, Jordan, Timothy Chalamet, Henry, and Violet. And don't forget that all of us will always have time. <laughs> Have a good power. morning or good night whenever you're See watching you at this. Coachella. Peace out. What about the afternoon? Yes. Afternoon hey. too. Thank you. Afternoon.